Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Serious storms are moving across Metro Detroit as we speak, taking a look at Storm Tracker 4 as we enter the window when things have the possibility of turning severe. Yeah, parts of the area are under a severe thunderstorm warning right now. Let's get right over to Brett Collar with what you should expect for the next few hours here, Brett. Hey, these storms are strong. They've already been producing damage. We'll likely do a little bit more of that going forward as they continue to drop a lot of rain and some very strong winds. Storm reports are coming in from the National Weather Service in the Orton area of multiple uh, trees down there as we head further to the uh, east. We've also got a storm report just to the west of Imlay City and multiple trees and power lines down. So power outages also a concern going forward out in Manchester. Trees and power lines down. Social media photos are showing that. Storm Tracker 4, I want to start with no radar so that you can see all the warnings. Macomb, St. Clair County until 6.15 p.m. Livingston County, also Washtenaw until 6.30 p.m. because there is some very heavy rain falling. There is a lot of strong winds out there. On top of that, the hail threat is still there. So in the meantime, I want to show you this. This heavy rain in and around the Novi area. In fact, we'll zoom in closer and uh, we'll, we'll get the radar off the screen there for some reason, but we'll put it back on. What happened here earlier, there was a line of showers and storms and moving south. Another one moving from west to east. They've kind of interacted with each other and are now blowing back up. So there's a lot of rain falling. There's also some strong winds. We'll track them for you coming up in just a bit. Hey, Brett, the state is expanding testing after a cancer causing chemical was released into the Huron River. It came from a wastewater treatment facility and went into the Norton Creek. Right now, everyone is being asked to stay out of the river from Whitsum Road in Oakland County to Kensington Road in Livingston County. Megan Woods is at the Kensington Metro Park where not everybody has heard those warnings. Earlier, it was a beautiful day to stop at the beach, but people are now disappointed because they can't. Meanwhile, the Huron River Watershed Council, who protects the Huron River, is frustrated with this spill. It's heartbreaking and devastating that we have to deal with this. Uh, we've been dealing with PFAS since 2018, and now with hexavalent chromium, both from the same polluter, it really feels like we're just being kicked while we're down. Daniel Brown with the Huron River Watershed Council says this chemical spill is not only scary for public health, but for recreation too. It's a really popular spot. You know, we typically see uh, you know, families out kayaking, paddling, swimming, a lot of people along the river's edge. And, and today it's really just kind of eerie that we don't see many people out enjoying the park of the river. And the people who do show up, well, they're met with a lot of signs and disappointment. Were we gonna go to the beach today? We were, we were gonna go. The only activity that is open is a splash pad that uses city water. We brought all our beach toys. We were thinking we would build a sand castle. But we're here at the splash pad making the best of it. The important thing here is that people avoid contact. So it's pretty nasty stuff. Um, it can be toxic through any exposure pathway, whether you're breathing it in, whether you're touching it, whether you're drinking it. Eagle sampled nine different locations and they're expected to get those results back tomorrow. Back to you. Hey, Megan, thank you. An Oakland County Circuit Court judge rules to keep a restraining order in place that prevents Michigan County prosecutors from filing charges under Michigan's 1931 ban on abortions. You may recall the judge issued the temporary resta restraining order Monday, stopping county prosecutors from enforcing the state's ban. The order was issued as state officials scrambled to respond to a Michigan Court of Appeals ruling Monday morning that found county prosecutors could enforce the state's abortion ban. We'll stay on top of this as we learn more. An attorney suing the Oxford School District says an armed security guard did not attempt to stop the shooter. Attorney Ben Johnson is asking a judge to add that security guard to a lawsuit they filed in January. Johnson says the guard told investigators she thought the shooting was a drill and one of the bleeding students was wearing makeup. Attorneys say surveillance video shows the guard open and then closed the door to a bathroom without entering. They say the shooter, Ethan Crumbly, was in that bathroom with two students. Both were shot a short time after, and Justin Schilling died. It's, um, it's a difficult to know that he could still be here if somebody did their job. 
The security guard is a retired deputy with the Oakland County Sheriff's Office and was an employee of the school district. The guard no longer works there. In decision 2022, for the first time, two women will be facing off in the general election for the chance to be the next governor of Michigan. Tudor Dixon won last night's primary, beating out four other candidates. She had 41% of the vote. The businesswoman and conservative commentator quickly turned her attention to the race against Governor Gretchen Whitmer in a victory speech last night. Dixon zeroed in on COVID lockdowns, inflation, and much more. Our Rod Maloney running her claims through the trust index. Rod. Well, you know, it was a political speech, and you would expect some fiery rhetoric in a speech like that. She went after the governor hard, as you said. Uh, but she also said some things that perked up some ears. So we decided that we would check the record, try and get some perspective by running it through the trust index. Point number one, defunding the police. Gretchen Whitmer embraces the spirit of defund the police. On this point, we say, be careful. It is true you can find on the internet video of Governor Whitmer saying of the defund the police movement, quote, the spirit of it, I do support that, end quote. But has also repeatedly said she does not support defunding the police. In the bipartisan 2023 budget, $1.6 billion went to Michigan police and fire operations, the highest in 20 years. As for gasoline prices and inflation. Instead of tackling inflation, Gretchen Whitmer is talking about anything but. Here too we say... Be careful. It is true in April, Gretchen Whitmer vetoed a Republican bill meant to declare a gas tax holiday, saving 27 cents a gallon. Wouldn't have gone into effect until 2023, which is why her office says she vetoed it. But she did publicly ask President Biden for a federal gas tax holiday that hasn't come and also proposed suspending Michigan gasoline sales tax, which might together, she claims, save about 50 cents a gallon. But it's all talk at this point in Lansing and in Washington, D.C. And finally, Gretchen Whitmer's driven grocery prices through the roof. Bacon's up 25%. I mean, come on, bacon. Once again, we say, be careful. Yes, it is true. Bacon prices are up. It's $7.49 a pound, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's only up 11% from a year ago. But go back to 2020 and bacon is up 28%. Dixon didn't specify a time frame, but we must point out there is no direct connection between Governor Whitmer and the price of food. Now, one of the things that uh, Dixon did say is the governor allowed criminals to get away with stealing millions from our unemployment system when those who really needed it couldn't get it. And the Michigan Inspector General's office did report earlier this year that eight and a half billion dollars worth of unemployment benefits were taken fraudulently from the governor's unemployment office. There's your trust index. Back to you. And we appreciate it, Rod. I'm sure we'll hear a few more in the next three months. Thanks, Rod. People living in Oakland County now have a new tool to help them feel safe in their neighborhood. The sheriff's office is launching a program that will alert you directly if there's a problem nearby. Kim DiGiulio shows us how it works and how you can sign up. Avoiding problems before they happen. It's easier said than done, but that's what Oakland County Sheriff's Office is aiming to do through their Sheriff Shield membership program. It's easy to sign up for. Just submit your email address so you can receive timely information about what's going on in Oakland County. You'll get an email and it will say, this is something to be aware of. This is something that we're concerned about. But it's more than just local information. They work with the New York Police Department and Homeland Security to gather any information that could be a threat to our area. The most recent uh, terrorist that was taken out in Afghanistan, what does that mean back home? What are potential fallouts from that? Things that people or businesses should think about or be aware of. The Sheriff's Office Shield program is also a great way for members to report suspicious activity effectively and therefore getting that information out to the people who need it. And don't worry, they don't plan on overflowing your inbox. So maybe one week you'll get two or three things. Um, if it's important, in other weeks it may kind of go kind of quiet. Bouchard says that this is just a great way to use our devices and technology to keep Oakland County a great place to live, work, and play. Situational awareness just makes you in a better position to respond if an emergency happens fire, active shooter, tornado, whatever the case may be. A couple of upcoming events that the Sheriff Shield membership program would warn its members about 
are the Dream Cruise here on Woodward. Also, the Michigan Renaissance Festival over in Holly and Arts Beats and Eats happening in downtown Royal Oak. If you'd like the link to sign up for this membership, I've posted it at clickondetroit.com. In Oakland County, I'm Kim DeGiulio, Local 4. OK, Kim, thanks. Parents across the country are still struggling to find baby formula. And soon to be parents in a lot of cases. The troubled Abbott plant in Sturgis is back up and running and millions of pounds of formula has been flown in from overseas. Tonight, NBC Nightly News looks into why there is still a shortage. When I go in the store and I go to the baby aisle, I always want to go and look. And of course, I go and it's like, oh, please let it be some for you, please. And you go and it's just like, oh, you're just. Yeah. It's, I don't even want to go because I know it's not going to be there. So I don't even want to go through that heartbreak of like, oh, uh, here we go again. Nightly News is working to find out when the formula will be fully restocked. That's coming up at 630 on NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt.